Welcome to the Foss North pre-show. I want to start by thanking all our sponsors and collaboration partners and everyone that just makes this possible. Um, it's been a challenging time with Corona, but uh, thanks to our awesome community, we're actually able to pull this off as a virtual event and I'm really looking forward for the coming four days. So today we're Tobias, Henrik and myself, Johan. We're also visited by one of our sponsors and, and community contributors, uh, Victoria from 46 Elks and the Ingrid project. Sure, yes, so uh, we're happy to be sponsoring FOSS and what we have for you is an API that you can play with. And anyone who creates an account at 46 Elks during the FOSS days will get credits and access to a phone number that you can automate. So if you want to send an SMS from the command line, that's now easy to do. Ah, so you can track people or harass people <laughs> automatically. Or you could automate, hey, I'm coming in late to work today and making sure that sends off the right emails or in the right Slack channels. Yeah, or maybe just send something you're late to the meeting one minute after to <laughs> <laughs> the common suspects. That would be cool. Uh, another thing that we talked about for... Uh, for the community day, which unfortunately got cancelled, was, was this Ingrid effort that, that you're running. Could you, could you tell a bit about that? Absolutely. So I've been lacking an IT calendar for Sweden for the past 10 years. I've been waiting for someone to build a list of events that's happening. And it's not happening, so I'm creating that calendar. And uh, so the URL is itingrid.se. And in English, that would be IT in grid. So maybe the design will be a grid one going forward but the, the whole project is up on github and anyone can add events obviously right now there's not going to be a lot of live events uh but feel free to share online events as well and it's up for oh, anyone and, it, and it's used to merge do merge requests then or, or how does one contribute yes so you can make a pull request uh, and you can also send me an email if if you have questions about how to make a pull request or if you just want me to add something for you cool. and and it's up for uh, anyone to help out, whether it's the design or the code or making sure events find their way into Ingrid. Is so, it based in, in Sweden? Is it Swedish events or national, uh, European or international events? No, so, so we're focusing on Sweden first because mm -hmm. that's what's been missing, I feel, in Sweden. And if we can make it work really well in, in Sweden, then there's nothing stopping us from making it local globally. Okay. Cool. Do you have like a location filter so you can search where the events are or is it just a list for Sweden at the moment? Well, so right now there's a list of the cities where there are actually some events available. Cool. Yeah, but I'm asking because I, I just noted that Meetup has introduced a virtual meeting class now in, in light of the virus. So it seems like a lot of events are going virtual. Right, yes. So. I mean, feel free to add that functionality to Ingrid yourself. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a pull request away. <laughs> yeah, so for tomorrow, the, the first speaker up is Christopher Granlund from, uh, from Quad Snack. Uh, he was in the lightning talks as, as well. So from a technology standpoint, I'm not super concerned. We, we know that he has a setup that works, which is good for the first guy on stage. Um, he's going to talk about Rook. Uh, which goes into like infrastructure and, and cloud stuff, it feels like, with Kubernetes and other keywords in there. So it's, it's not what I work with from a day-to-day -day basis, but it, it, Christopher is a great speaker, so I'm, all, I'm always looking forward to it. Uh, it's funny, the, his lightning talk was really fascinating because it's, by coincidence, we're in a situation where the lightning talk was immensely uh, like um, actual. Yeah, it's kind of fun. I've spread it among uh, among colleagues and so on at work. Yeah. So yeah, it, it's good to have a ten minute section on working from home. Yeah, so he has a lot of pressure on delivering this talk. Yes, definitely, definitely. But it, it's a more technical talk, of course. I mean, the other one was more like how to handle how to handle working from home. Yeah, exactly. We go back to to what Force North is about, so to speak, applicable technical things. So. That'll be fun. Yeah, it sounds like a fun thing, I think. So the next speaker up, uh, Jakob, has also been talking at Foss North, I think it's two years ago. Um, this year he will talk about something that excites me, virtual and augmented reality. Uh, I mean, I've, I've got my Oculus at home and, and play my car games, uh, but there's very little Linux contents there, which he is 
on a on a mission to fix it seems it, it feels like a space where there is also you have never heard really about uh, anything vr in in FOSS. it's always like use steam or use whatever proprietary engine so yeah it would be really cool yeah, and I wonder about the the APIs there. I mean, he, he's talking about multiple companies having their own APIs. Uh, from my setup, which is on my gaming machine, which does not run Linux, uh, it seems like most people use the Steam APIs at the moment. Um, but he's talking about the the single API on the Chronos, uh, which is OpenXR, I believe. So mm. it will be fun to see that and then actually see how it works. Have you guys been working using VR or anything? I, I know that you, you and I, Thompson, have worked at the place together many years ago that, that had the rig, but <clears throat> did you ever play with it? Yeah, I mean, I, I played some games with it. Uh, I never tried this very scary zombie game because it seemed too scary. It was too real uh, for the people, <laughs> but uh, I mean... Than As opposed game, to the situation where it's currently in now? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. I mean, these corona-type zombies, they tend to stay at home. They don't really reach out to you instead. See, I, I'm, I'm not the gaming kind of guy, but, uh, but the I use this, a map of, of the stars so when I'm in my summer house all the summer. Uh, I can see the uh, stars more easily. That's about as augmented reality I get. The last speaker up for, for the first day will be Ron Munitz. Um, he also did a lightning talk on, uh, on a similar topic, actually, but he, he gets to flesh out his ideas here. Uh, the, the title is Understanding, Building, and Researching Minimal and Not-So-Minimal Linux Systems, uh, which is kind of fun. Uh, it sounds as if he's really going to, to go deep, so, so to see what actually happens when you start a machine, what pieces you need to put together, and then how to actually build that in a convenient way. Yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting to see that uh, all the stuff that you would normally take for granted when using uh, some kind of uh, OS builder tool is something that, you know, if you want to go deeper into it, it's it's useful knowledge to have. Yeah, I mean, we, I've been working with Yocto, but to me, it's a bit like a glorified Gen 2 because I've never really built the, the, the BSP or the low level stuff. Uh, so I'm looking forward to, to hearing about that. Uh, same here. I've, I've I've been customizing, or not not these days. I know about some ten years ago. You customize your kernel every now and then, and you know you wrote some patches to uh, X386 or what have you. But with this, it goes way beyond that. So that this is going to be fascinating. I think. Yeah, it'll be fun. And and knowing Ron from the lightning talks, uh, it's good that he's last uh, because he he might run over his time. But I I think that. <laughs> No offense to Ron, uh, but I actually think that's a good thing since he, he goes into into such a challenging area. So, uh, and he was super energetic about it in his lightning talk. So, I mean, stretching that out to a long talk would be uh, super exciting. Yeah, I mean, it, it originally asked for two hour slots, and we I replied that we don't have two hour slots. So, so let's see how long he so gets. So perhaps going. he's going for a condensed two hour uh, lecture in in forty five minutes. Yeah, it's gonna be yeah. awesome. So tomorrow is the first day that we're actually going properly virtual. Uh, last week we tried the uh, lightning talks, which is the stress test for the infrastructure. Lots of speaker changes, lots of uh, lots of handovers of the screen share and confusion, uh, and we managed to survive that. So, so I'm looking forward to to that. Uh, one of the things that could be good to know is is how we actually let you guys interact with the uh, with the speakers. Um, the problem we have is that the, there is a substantial lag from the speaker to the to the live stream, uh, multiple tens of seconds. Um, so the plan is really to to use the tool Slido, uh, which allows you to ask questions and vote for questions during the talks, uh, and then the moderator from Foss North will read up the questions to the uh, to the speaker who will reply. Um, but that's the uh, the main way to ask complex questions and, and then of course we will have people hanging about in, in the YouTube comments and there you can also applause and then sort of cheerfully engage uh, so so that the speaker gets the ego boost boost because it's uh, yeah it's challenging to to speak to to a single computer monitor really 
I see nodding from Henrik, but that doesn't yeah. work in a, in a sound no. broadcast. <laughs> no, and this, this is new to everyone here. And uh, we, we laughed about it uh, just after the lightning talk session last week. That, that for me, uh, having organized conferences for a couple of times, it's, it was way more stressful to do one hour of lightning talks with this like virtual setup and uh, chat channels all over and YouTube lagging and Zoom here and Zoom there. And so it, it, it's been a stressful experience. I think I'm hoping that next week or this weekend is going to be better. Yeah, I think it'll be good. And, and we also don't have a speaker change every 10 minutes. It will be every hour. So, yeah. so at least we can get our pulse down until the next one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, the, the general game plan will be that uh, that we have a moderator per session uh, and then everything will be broadcast from from machine so so there will be someone announcing the speaker and there will be someone asking the questions during the session um, and that's sort of the bridge between the audience and the speaker um, and hopefully we can sort of get this feeling of, of being in one room and actually engaging with the speaker and not only watching sort of a pre-recorded stream the organization part of things has been very, very stressful the past two weeks, but we have awesome sponsors. All sponsors support us in, in doing this and postponing the main, the physical event. And almost all speakers will be there. Um, some of them choose to, to only engage in the, in the face-to-face or the physical event this fall, but no speakers has been lost. And we actually were able to, to re-sign a couple of speakers that we couldn't get to Europe due to, to visa regulations and so on in, in the short time that we had. So, so I'm really happy about the, all the people joining in. This is, uh, I'm seeing this in, in many conferences right now that you, in, the conferences are switching to virtual. Some of them are impossible because there might be regulations on uh, a no recording, uh, like a manifest or something. Uh, but I'm seeing this all over, and it's perhaps we, it's uh, time for a change. Yeah. And I mean, again, uh, sorry. No, please. No, I, as you often mentioned, the when going to to a conference like like Fostum, I think I went to like one or two this February and then I spent most of the time in the hallway. Yeah, so it's, we need someone to set up an IRC channel uh, or something like that. We won't have time to moderate that, so I will not say that there is an official one, but it would be fun to just have sort of a community a hallway track. But it's, it's not the same thing. I mean, we're, after all, we are humans. So it, it's good to meet people now and uh, make friends. It's way easier to connect to, to people after having met them. I did that yesterday and it was smooth. Uh, I contacted the person which I on purpose met uh, down in at Fostum. So it was way easier to connect to him now. Yeah, I mean, first first impressions is always easier to make face to face. One fun thing from the lightning talks is actually that I think it was Andreas Nilsson who got a question with a name on it and they decided to meet up afterwards. So there is mm -hmm. still some of the hallway effect. So let's see yeah. how much we can preserve it. Yeah. I would say that I had the experience last night. It was brilliant. So I put, pushed up, uh, I was doing a hackathon for the whole crisis and then hack for crisis came up uh, a few hours later. And so this person was making a pull request. And as I was merging it, I was discovered, oh, there was this thing I needed to fix. And then that person discovered that something else needed to be fixed. And we had this, you know, pull request <laughs> comments dialogue. And, you know, it turned friendlier and friendlier. Uh, but that's also a nice way of uh, chatting to each other, even though it's remote and online, because there's something in the middle that we all agree on to focus on. Uh, so I'm just saying there's so much opportunity and potential in communicating online without it needing to be a what they're needing to be a water cooler but just to summarize very quickly what's up for tomorrow uh there will be a youtube live stream hang around there there will be a slido link and code during the stream no need to sign up for anything just join in there ask your question vote for other people's question to to make sure that we ask the right questions to the speakers and and share in the youtube comments to to give the speakers their ego boost they will unfortunately not see it live but they will see it afterwards absolutely do that <laughs>